John Dillon here with a very, very exciting tutorial from visualbroccoli.com. What makes this tutorial kind of exciting, it really does lay the foundation for many tutorials to come and how you can learn to prepare your files from Photoshop or Photoshop elements to be used in other types of presentation mediums like PowerPoint, Keynote, but also use in Word and Publisher or just about any type of program. So without further ado, let's get started. So here is an example of what we're going to do in this lesson. Uh, my topic here, let's say hypothetically, and of course it could be anything, but this is, let's say I'm going to do a talk on biohazards in the workplace. And this is pretty typical where people have a slide with some text and a bullet point and they have an image. Now, this doesn't look too bad. In fact, this is fairly clean, cleaner than most presentations. And as you're going to find in my tutorials, I have a tendency to keep slides very simple and very clean. And we'll talk more about that later on. But what we want to do here is uh, we're going to really kind of have this biohazard image jump out. And what we're going to do is remove the white. We're going to make it transparent. We're going to add a drop shadow to kind of give our image a little bit of pop, if you will, or kind of a three dimension look. And then we're going to change it from black to red. And of course, I could change it to white or other colors. But for this tutorial, we're going to change it to red. And the end result we're going to have something like this. So let's jump into Photoshop Elements or Photoshop, depending which route you're going, and let's get started. Let's jump into Photoshop and get started. I have my image biohazard symbol, which by the way, you can download from our website so you can follow along with this tutorial. And we're going to go ahead and edit it and get rid of that white background as indicated. Now, if you have an older version of Elements, don't worry about it. You should be able to still be able to accomplish the same objectives. What I'm going to do first of all, and this is a very important step. In fact, it's a crucial step. We need to unlock this background layer. So over here in the Layers palette, and by the way, if something is not visible that I'm referencing, just go up to Window and click on it. So in this case, layer, it has a check mark in front of it, which tells me it is open already. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. In fact, what I'm going to do just to clean this up a little bit, I'm going to go to window and turn off the project bin. We don't really need it. Okay. It gives us a little more room and cleans it up. Also in the layer, you have a thumbnail of the image. If it's not visible, just click on this arrow here, go to panel options, and make sure you select an image. Really, for all practical purposes, I have never chose none. All right, we're all set. First thing, we need to unlock this layer because we need to be able to get rid of the white and reveal transparency or nothingness. I'm not sure if nothingness is a word, but it seems to work here. Right now, I can't get rid of the white area and I can't make it transparent. So to do that, I need to change this from a background to a layer and we need to unlock it. So we're going to do both at the same time by double clicking on it. And it wants to name it layer zero, which I'm fine with that. I can also name it something else. I'm going to do OK. And now it has changed it from a background layer to a layer. It's also unlocked it. It also means I can reveal transparency, which is underneath it. So if I use the opacity tool and think of it this way, an opacity tool is, is the same as transparency. 100% means it's 100% solid. 90% means it's 90% solid or 10% transparent, depending on how you want to look at it. And it starts to reveal what's underneath it. So I can go all the way down to zero here and make it 100% transparent. And transparencies be represented by this checkered box in the background. That's what we're looking for. for. Right now, let's go back up to 100 and let's get rid of the white so we can reveal the transparent background. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a tool called the Magic Wand tool. And it's going to look like a magic wand. And if you actually hover over here in the tools, you can actually see the names. 
So right here, I want the magic wand tool. I'm going to select it. And if I come over here, I want to select it. Oh, I see a little problem there. I need to select my layer over here. Now, let's go ahead and just select them black, for example. You notice I get all these marching ants selecting everything that is black. And since all the black areas touch each other, it selected all the black. If I come here, for example, and just select this, this circle in the center, you'll notice I only get marching ants around the circle. It doesn't select all the other white areas because these are non-contiguous. I could also come up here, since this is simply white and black, it just goes select and grab all similar, which means it'll grab all the white. I'm going to just click out here in the middle, in the middle of the gray for a minute just to unselect everything. Or I can select the white, push down the shift key, and you see the plus? Now I can add multiple layers. There are reasons you may want to do all of this, but I'm just giving you a few options. So, let me deselect again. I'm going to this time go select, deselect. So the simplest way to do this is select with the magic wand tool, hit your shift key, and select multiple areas, and we are set to go. Let's go ahead and hit delete. And we have gotten rid of all the white, which now was represented by transparency. Let's deselect, and I'm just going to click over here for simplicity. And now what I want to do is change the black to red. We're going to use another tool called the magic. We're going to use another tool called the paint bucket tool. So I'm going to select that, and the paint bucket tool is going to apply whatever color is set to the foreground. And right now, that happens to be black. I can switch it by hitting these double arrows and make it white. I don't want white and I don't want black. So what I want to do here is click on the swatch and I can scroll up and down here and choose from a variety of colors, then come in here and even get really, you know, fine tune what I want. But I want a red, that works. Or I can go window, color swatches, and bring up a whole slew of colors from a palette. And I'm going to choose red. That's a dark red. And you notice that my foreground color changes to dark red. But I want something actually a little brighter. Let's go with this one. I like that. And now the paint bucket tool is still selected. I'm just going to click on, kind of like I did with the magic wand tool. But this time I'm going to apply red to everything that this touches. And there we go. It's applied red to all this. And I'm happy with that. We have one more thing to do, and that is we need to add a drop shadow. So I'm going to go to my effects, make sure I select my layer, which is selected here. And if my effects palette is not visible, go to Window and click on Effects. And what I want here in version 9, I have four options up here. And what I want is the second one called Layer Styles. It's kind of got this double image of a box. Click on that and I have a drop down menu. Now this is going alphabetical and it's choosing bevels first. I want to go to the drop down menu and select drop shadows. And what I want is I want a nice soft shadow but you have different choices. So here's one called noisy and if I select it and apply you'll see some noise applied to it. One thing to be careful of, and I'm going to pick one that's got a really kind of a high shadow. If you notice down here, and it's kind of hard to see in the transparent background, but you see down here the shadow is kind of being cut off. So what I may need to do is either resize my image or make the canvas size larger, which you can just go up to image and look at your canvas size and resize it. So resize canvas size. Or I can just simply, I have plenty of room, just bring it up here. I just want to make sure the shadow doesn't get cut off on the bottom here and over to the left side. But this is not the shadow I want. I actually want a soft shadow, so I'm going to choose this bottom one. And if you actually hover over it, it'll say Soft Edge Shadow. Hit Apply. And I am happy with that. That's what I want. This looks great. And now I'm going to go File, Save As. And we're going to save the format as a PNG file, which is going to preserve the transparencies. So, 
go down to the for format and look for PNG file. And I'm going to choose Biohazard 2. I'm going to overwrite an existing file. And it's going to ask me PNG options. Just go OK. Don't choose anything. Say OK. And we're good. Let's go into PowerPoint and bring in this bad boy. Here we are in PowerPoint 2007. I'm going to go ahead and insert our image. And there it is. And it's a little larger than I need it, which is OK. And I'm going to bring that right here. And we're looking pretty good. Now, there are things we can do with this image, which we'll cover in other tutorials. Lots of different options. As I said, this is just a basic foundation for things to come. The one thing with this is I'm pretty happy with this slide. It's looking pretty clean. I don't have a lot of text or bullet points on it. But what I might want to do is, is even go a step further. Let's go to full presentation mode here. And instead of having the bullet point, maybe I'll do something like this. Simply get rid of the bullet point and keep the text even cleaner. And again, I have a visual cue with the text for me as the presenter. And I have some eye candy for my audience. This is just one example of how we can make our presentations a little more editable for our classroom. Well, that's all the time we have today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to let us know. Until then, take care.